So today we will be discussing on the bacterial photosynthesis. So the trapping of light energy and its conversion to chemical energy, which is then used to reduce carbon dioxide and incorporate it into the organic form is termed as the photosynthesis. This synthesis primarily of the sugars by using carbon atoms from carbon dioxide gas is also termed as carbon fixation. So phototrops are the organism that carry out this process of photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is one of the most significant metabolic processes on the earth because almost all our energy is derived from solar energy. And the process is also responsible for fulfilling the supply of oxygen on earth and over half of the photosynthesis on earth is carried out by microorganisms. So cyanobacteria, that is we commonly call it as blue-green algae, then the green sulfur bacteria, green non-sulfur bacteria, purple sulfur bacteria, purple non-sulfur are some of the bacteria that undergo this process that is photosynthesis. So now we'll come to the classification of photosynthetic bacteria. Photosynthetic bacteria are classified into two. The first one is the oxygenic photosynthetic bacteria and the second one is the anoxygenic photosynthetic bacteria. So first we'll come to oxygenic photosynthetic bacteria. Oxygenic photosynthetic bacteria, they carry out photosynthesis in a way plants do show. They contain light harvesting pigments, absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen. And the only form of oxygenic photosynthetic bacteria is the cyanobacteria. So cyanobacteria are the blue green in color and converts the earth's early oxygen deficient atmosphere to an oxygen rich environment. So these bacteria that is the cyanobacteria are mostly found in water but can survive on land, in rocks and even in animals shells and in coral. They are also known to be endosymbiont that is they can live within the cells or body of another organism in a mutually beneficial way. So next we'll see the anoxygenic photosynthetic bacteria. These anoxygenic photosynthetic bacteria consume carbon dioxide but do not release oxygen. This includes the green and purple bacteria, filamentous anoxygenic phototrophs and phototrophic heliobacteria. So purple bacteria, they produce sulfur particles inside their cell. They are found either in stagnant water or hot sulfuric springs. These organisms, instead of using water to photosynthesize their plants and cyanobacteria, purple sulfur bacteria use hydrogen sulfide as their reducing agent. And because of this, they give off sulfur rather than oxygen. So purple non-sulfur bacteria do not release sulfur because instead of using this hydrogen sulfide as its reducing agent, they use hydrogen. And in case of phototrophic heliobacteria, they are found in soil and they use a particular type of bacterial chlorophyll which differentiates them from other type of photosynthetic bacteria. They are photoheterotrophs, that is, they cannot use carbon dioxide as their primary source of carbon. So green and red filamentous and oxygenic phototrophs uses these filaments to move around. And the color, it depends on the type of bacterial chlorophyll the particular organism uses. So this form of bacteria can either be photoautotrophic, that is, they make their own energy through the sun's energy or chemoorganotrophic, that is, which requires a source of carbon or photoheterotrophic, that is, they don't use carbon dioxide as their carbon source. So now we'll come to photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is divided into two parts. First one is the light reaction and another one is the dark reaction. In the light reaction, this light energy is trapped and is converted to chemical energy, whereas 
in the dark reaction, the energy from the light reaction is used to reduce or fix the carbon dioxide and synthesize cell constituent. So next is the light reaction in eukaryotes and the cyanobacteria. So for the absorption of light, all photosynthetic organism have pigments. So pigments include the chlorophyll, carotenoids, phycoerythrin and phycocyanin. From among this pigment, chlorophyll is the most important one. So chlorophyll are the large planar rings composed of four substituted pyrrole rings with a magnesium atom which is coordinated to the central nitrogen atom. Although several chlorophylls are found in eukaryotes, the most important are the chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Carotenoids are long molecules usually yellowish in color and possess an extensive conjugated double bond system. Certain red algae and cyanobacteria, they possess another photosynthetic pigment which is known as phycobilly proteins. So these phycobilly proteins are the phycoerythrin and the phycocyanid which consist of a protein with a tetrapyrrole attached. Phycoerythrin is a red pigment with maximum absorption at around 550 nanometer while phycocyanin is blue with maximum absorption at around 620 to 640 nanometer. These phycobilly proteins along with the chlorophylls are called the accessory pigments. Chlorophylls they cannot absorb light energy effectively in the blue green through yellow range but accessory pigments do absorb light in this region and they transfer the trapped energy to the chlorophyll. Hence, they make this photosynthesis more efficient over a broader range. So chlorophyll and the accessory pigments are assembled in a highly organized areas known as the antennas, which function to create a large surface area to trap many photons of light. So an antenna has about 300 chlorophyll molecules. So two kinds of antennas are associated with two different photosystem in eukaryotes and the cyanobacteria. In photosystem 1, it absorbs the longer wavelength light that is more than 680 nanometer and funnels the energy to a special chlorophyll A molecule called P700. So this P700, it absorbs light effectively at 700 nanometer wavelength and hence the term is given P700. So photosystem 2, it traps the light at a shorter wavelength that is 680 nanometer and it transfers the energy to a special chlorophyll P680. When the antenna in the photosystem 1 transfer the light energy to the reaction center that is P700 chlorophyll, it absorbs the energy and is excited and ultimately its reduction potential becomes very negative. Further, it donates the electron to a chlorophyll A molecule or an iron sulfur protein and the electron is eventually transferred to a ferridoxin and can travel in any of the two directions that is the cyclic photophosphorylation and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. In the cyclic pathway, the electron moves in cyclic route through a series of electron carriers and then comes back to the oxidized P700. So this pathway is termed as cyclic because the electrons from the P700, it returns back to P700 after traveling to the photosynthetic electron transport chain. Here, ATP is formed during cyclic electron transport in the region of cytochrome B6. Hence, this process is called the cyclic photophosphorylation because electrons travel in cyclic pathway and the ATP is formed. While in the case of non-cyclic pathway, it involves both the photosystem. Like in cyclic pathway here, also P700 is excited and it donates an electron to the ferridoxin. In this pathway, 
reduced ferridoxin reduced NADP to NADPH. Since the electrons it contributes to the NADP, it cannot be used to reduce oxidize P700. Photosystem 2 involvement is necessary here. So it donates the electrons to the oxidized P700 and generates the ATP in the process. The antenna in the photosystem 2 absorbs light energy and excites P680 which then reduces pheophytin A. Further, electrons travel to Q that is plus 2 quinone and down the electron transport chain to P700. Oxidized P680 then obtains an electron from the oxidation of water to oxygen. Thus, electrons flow from water all the way to the NADP with the aid of energy from two photosystems and ATP is synthesized by non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Then, the dark reaction, it requires three ATPs and two NADPH to reduce one carbon dioxide and used it to synthesize carbohydrate. In non-cyclic pathway, it generates one NADPH and one ATP per pair of electrons. Therefore, four electrons passing through the system will produce two NADPH and two ATPs. Then for carbon dioxide fixation, the ratio of ATP to NADPH requires three is to two, which means one more ATP is needed to be supplied. Hence, cyclic photophosphorylation, it operates independently to generate this extra ATP. So now we'll come to light reaction in green and purple bacteria. Green and purple photosynthetic bacteria, they greatly differ from cyanobacteria and the eukaryotic photosynthesizers. The green and the purple bacteria are anoxygenic, which means that they do not use water as the electron source or produce oxygen photosynthetically. While the cyanobacteria and the eukaryotes are always oxygenic. These green and purple bacteria, they possess a pigment which is known as bacteriochlorophyll with absorption maxima at a longer wavelength. So purple and green bacteria, they lack this photosystem too and hence they cannot use water as the electron donor in the non-cyclic electron transport chain. Also, without photosystem too, they cannot produce oxygen from water. In these bacteria, when a reaction center chlorophyll, that is P870, is excited, it donates an electron to the bacteriophyophytin. Further, electrons then flows to the quinone through an electron transport chain back to P870 while driving ATP. These bacteria then synthesize NADH in three ways. When they are growing, in the presence of hydrogen gas, the hydrogen can use directly in the production of NADH. Also, many purple photosynthetic bacteria use ATP or the proton motive force to reverse the flow of electrons in an electron transport chain and move them from the inorganic or organic donors to NAD. The green sulfur bacteria, they carry out a simple form of non-cyclic photosynthetic electron flow to reduce NAD. So in the conclusion, I would like to add that photosynthesis is a light dependent energy yielding process. And it is the synthesis of carbohydrate from carbon dioxide in the presence of light and hence the carbohydrate that is formed in this process is used for metabolism. And photosynthesis in plants, algae and cyanobacteria is similar to that of the bacterial photosynthesis in the requirement for large amount of energy in the form of ATP, but different with respect to form of chemical reductants and end products of photosynthesis.